Hello. Hello. Well, today we're going to talk about the nightmare when it comes to building a tiny shipping container house. Yes, the water condensation. So, let's get started. Before we start this episode, we need to explain the dynamic behind this episode. Well, today is going to be a theoretical episode. We are going to basically talk about everything about condensation problems in a shipping container, in a shipping container house, in a small, you know, living space. And next week, we are going to actually put this on practice. And next week, we're going to build the solution we talk about today. So what's the reason for that? I know you guys must be expecting us to have a building episode and to install the ceiling panels as we promised last week but unfortunately that didn't happen yeah and we have a reason for that after we posted the last episode a lot of people had comments on the session below about the problems with condensation that we might have yeah a lot of people are worried that the solution we showed is not good enough for the condensation and, that, and they're saying that we would still have condensation problems we kind of disagree, we agree, but we were not like happy with, you know, like 100% with our solution, but at the same time, we didn't agree 100% with the comments until we receive a picture. We have a friend that just bought a shipping container like a month ago in our city, in the same place we are, on the same climate we are, and he sent it as a picture like four days ago, maybe five days ago, showing the amount of condensation that he just had during the night and asking if we had a solution for that. And that's the picture. Yeah, the picture you just saw is our friend's shipping container and to be worse, it's on our city, on the same weather we are. So we got scared. Yeah, the scenario here is a little bit different to our friends. Even though our friend is in our the same city, he has a... Oh, the roof of the shipping container has nothing on the top, it's just a bare roof. And that means that the cold weather is straight on the roof. In our case, I don't know if you watch, but we have like a whole playlist about the, we did tons of things on the roof, so <laughs> you can watch here if you didn't. And we have a wooden deck on the top, and underneath the wooden deck we have a alu-zinc sheet uh, roof, and underneath of that we have like a five centimeters of EPS styrofoam, and then we have a five centimeters gap, not even five, like four or five centimeters gap in between the styrofoam and the roof of the shipping container, and we painted the roof with asphalt paint that's another rubber paint that means our roof our plate won't get as cold as our friends plate but before we start talking and talking let's explain what's condensation condensation so basically condensation is when water on the vapor state becomes water on the liquid state it's the transition between vapor and liquid so a little bit confusing right yeah uh, <laughs> a situation where ev most of the people have experience in its condensation is when you are in a car on the winter so remember when you're driving the car on the winter with five people inside you have no the windows five but <laughs> yeah but just let's get like a, even worse you know a lot of people <laughs> so basically you have the windows closed because it's cold outside so outside of the car it's really cold on the inside of the car with five people breathing the air is hot and the air is humid because you know when we breathe we create water there are a lot of water on the air we breathe right so when this uh, hot and humid air touch the cold window of the car creates water basically the water that was already on the air becomes liquid instead of vapor and you you, you have seen that before right the windows or, are all or, covered on water or the can if you get a uh, yeah can of the same thing drinks. happens with beer who drinks beer you know the can is really hot and the soft drink <laughs> yeah it doesn't yeah. a can of drink it's really cold and the air is really hot and then creates water around the can it's the same principle so but let's go back to the car when you are in the car and the windows are all condensated once you open the window what happens it goes away yeah so in the shipping container it's really similar let's think about think about that you have a box made out of steel right and they still at night during the winter is really really cold and you have people living inside and pe these people cook these people breathe these people take showers 
all that creates humid air hot humid air inside of a cold box what does it happen when the hot humid air touches the shipping container it condensates and creates water just like the picture of my friend's shipping container as i showed you so that's what happened with the shipping container when there is hot inside and cold outside right so what's the problem with that yeah basically in our case for example we are going to have plywood walls and plywood ceiling and that means that if happen to have a condensation inside the condensation is going to be trapped in between the wall and the shipping container and between the ceiling and the shipping container in this case it's going to take a while until we realize we have water inside of our walls and that's tough because if we have water inside of the wall that means that water plus time equals mold <laughs> mold plus time equals health problems furniture problems and so a lot it's of problems. Damage everywhere. So somehow we need to fix the problem and we need to avoid having water inside of our walls, right? So what did we do this week? Searching and searching and searching. Yeah. We spent like two days searching and yeah. yeah, we took a break of building just to search. So we search on YouTube, we search on Google, we search on forums. We write the comments. We write the comments, we talk to our, some of our subscribers, we call stores to search for new materials, all this kind of stuff. So, one of our subscribers seems like he knew what he was talking about, right? His name is Robert, he's from Canada. Really different weather compared to our weather, but still he knows what he's talking about. And Robert said that he thinks we should use closed cell spray foam, but we don't have it here in our city. Yeah, we do agree. Closed cell spray foam would be the perfect solution. Why? Because... It would be glued to the plate of the shipping container, so we won't have any air around, so... Yeah, basically... No the, air, no water. Yeah, the thing is, uh, insulation is a way, any kind of insulation is a way of creating a, a transition area in between the cold in the hot inside so the outside is cold there is insulation and it's hot it's any kind hot of inside. insulation so basically the cold will never touch the hot there is this you know gap in between them that is the transition area where the cold becomes hot slowly instead of quick and that's where you won't find condensation because it's 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 it slows down the transition between cold and hot right if we use fiberglass wall that it still has air in between the plate and the insulation that means that the water can condensate in between the insulation and the plate and that would be a mess and because if they spray foam it would be like sealed so yeah basically the spray problem. foam you guarantee that there is no gap in between the insulation and the shipping container and that would be the perfect scenario because you, you won't, just won't have condensation right yeah, but we don't have this here. Yeah. So the thing yeah. is, you, the perfect scenario, it's not always possible. And in this case, it's not possible at all. Basically, so you understand what you're talking about. We are in the south of Brazil. And in, in Brazil, in general, we mostly build using... Mensory? Mensory? I think that, yeah, that's the name. Clay. Brick. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, when you use this kind of material, the wall itself can breathe. The wall can absorb humidity and can take away humidity depend on the weather so in a humid day the wall the wall is wet in a dry day the wall dries itself by itself and so the bricks kind of uh, insulation so. yeah so the wall itself it's an insulation piece you know so we don't use insulation so we don't have available most of the kinds of insulation as other countries has so we i mean we have like pet wall if you want we have fiberglass wall rock, wall rock wall and that's it that's all we we can use we don't use we don't have closed cell spray foam and at EPS. all oh and we have eps so first suggestion this comment said was to glue the eps on the top of the shipping container we have two problems on that with that we are not good friend of friends of glue with yeah glue. first would be really tough to glue big pieces of eps on the top of the shipping container and to do the format that's a second problem format. even though we, we you know we glue the eps it's a block you know like it's it's a straight it would still have gaps in between the shape of the ceiling 
So I don't believe it would work well because the humidity would be kind of trapped in these small spaces. So uh, what did we do? <laughs> you know, this, this guy, Robert, he sounds like he knew what he was talking about. So at one point I was like, I don't know what to do anymore. I, I don't know where to search. I don't know who to talk to. So I sent him a message. Like like no, no, so, uh, yeah, so I sent him a message like, Robert, the thing is, I do understand what you're saying. I do be, I believe and agree with most of it, but I don't have the solution for it with the materials we have. So if you're willing to help us and willing to have a bigger conversation with me, we can have a Google Hangout that's like an app and we can talk personally until we get the solution. Yeah, not personally. Yeah, we can talk like live, but by distance. Yeah, he's in Canada, really far away. I mean, like, I don't know, 10,000 kilometers, maybe more away. So he said yes. And four days ago, we spent well, almost three hours yeah, I, talking. Yeah, I think we spent almost three hours brainstorming the solution for our case scenario. So, so you understand, let's give you the scenario, right? We live in the south of Brazil. It's the weather is humid, but even though the weather is humid, we don't have a cold winter. Yeah, the average is like 16 degrees Celsius degree. Yeah, so Celsius. the average in the coldest month, that's July, it's 16 Celsius. So that means today. it's not that cold. Yeah, like today, it's the but coldest. But for us, it's really cold. Yeah, we're really, really cold today, actually. But <laughs> I mean, for some people, it's not cold at all. But for us, it's really cold. And we don't have available most of the insulations you would say we could use, right? So we talked with him for like three hours trying to get a solution. So his opinion is the worst you can do is to seal the walls. Because if you seal the walls, you have air inside trapping. And this air, if condensates, it's going to have water trapped inside of the wall. And that's what we were going to do? Yeah, that's what we were. That was the plan. The plan was to seal the original vents of the shipping container because we were afraid that bugs, because we live in a humid weather with lots of bugs. We were afraid that bugs would go inside of the wall and create nests inside of our walls. And that would be a nightmare. So we talked with Robert about all the solutions people gave us. And all the ideas. <laughs> and mostly we use the idea of an email we got a month ago, maybe two months ago. We got an email from a guy in New Zealand that lives in a shipping container house that you he might was have worried. Seen his, yeah, his actually, house. you might have seen him. Uh, have you heard about the channel called Living Big in a Tiny House? So, he one of his episodes is about a guy that is a boat builder in New Zealand that he built his own shipping container house. And this guy personally sent us an email two months ago saying he was worried about the solution for our insulation and giving his ideas about a solution for us. So the link for his video is down below. If you want to check out his house, we're going to leave the link on the comments. Not, not, yeah, we can leave on the comment or we can leave on the description below. So basically what he said is that you can never... Close the... Yeah, you can never... You can seal the wall, but you can never touch the insulation on the plate. You need to have an e space between the plate and the insulation so the air can flow in and between. And you need to leave the, the vents all yeah. open. Yeah, that's the, that's the difference because like if you leave a space and you seal the walls in the shipping container, then there's a problem. But in his opinion, you should use, you know, the vents of the shipping container to make sure that the humid air leaves the inside of... So basically, he said that you need to have a gap in between the insulation and the wall. And this gap needs to be connected between the wall, the ceiling and the other wall. So it's like a big air space behind the insulation and that you need to leave the vents open, otherwise you have a problem. We were afraid of bugs. Yeah, in the so. yeah that <laughs> when he sent the email, we were like, uh, I'm not sure about the, this solution <laughs> because he has not that many bugs in New Zealand problem, but we do have a lot of bugs, ants and spiders and all sorts of things. <laughs> and then for a while we are like, no, we're not gonna leave open for sure. <laughs> but after we talked to Robert, we, told his idea and mix all the ideas together and we came up with the solution. So the solution is? To, to put a net on the, the vent to avoid bugs and to leave this open to have the airflow. And to seal the walls. Basically we're gonna 
seal the walls but we're gonna just as she said we're gonna put the net so we make sure even though the walls are sealed we have this airflow behind the walls so we are gonna uh, we are gonna paint the ceiling with a that's this that, that's paint? an evolution of the solution we create with Robert after we talk to him we talk to a, the store and we a, even as we don't have insulation uh, closed cell spray foam we were trying to look for something similar of course not as good not even close just but to seal the, the ceiling and yeah. to avoid the, the difference of the temperature yeah basically we just want to warm it up the plate of the shipping container there is a kind of paint that here in the cane they even don't say paint they say rubber basically it's a rubber it's uh, an undercoating yeah it's undercoating they use on the bottle of cars so basically it's a thick Bo uh, rubber layer and we believe that if we paint the inside part of the shipping container with this layer we will somehow slow down the transition between the cold plate and the hot inside but the inside of the wall is actually not gonna be that hot anymore as we are gonna have it open to the outside so basically we're gonna have like a let's say a air layer that's not as cold as the outside and it's not as hot as the inside is a middle term and this i think we believe is going to help to you know bring this transition down like uh, how do you say that it's going to help not to have the such a quick transition it's going to be you no know, cold kind of cold and warm and in order not to make the house cold because as we have air inside the walls the house is going to be colder right we have insulation what kind of insulation? On the ceilings, we want we have some EPS that we got for free, so we are gonna use on the ceiling. And on the walls, we didn't decide yet if we are gonna use glass wall or PET. Poly, poly. We are gonna yeah write P down PET here. wall, but just in case we decide to use the internal rubber, blah blah blah. <laughs> and I think it's enough. Eh? I mean, and I guess that's it, right? Yeah. I don't know if you guys could understand the solution. <laughs> I know it might sound confusing, but it's still it's confusing for us also. But we are trying our best to explain what our thoughts are and what we are doing and how we are trying to fix the problem. You might understand next week when we show the process of us yeah. doing this. But basically, keep in mind, if you are worried of con with condensation, there are two key factors: that is the transition of cold and hot temperature with, you know, the water on the air, basically. It's, uh, we say, in Brazil, we say delta. Amplitude. Average. Thermal amplitude. Yeah, it's thermal amplitude. If it's too cold and too hot, you might have a problem if we, you don't slow down the transition. You need to slow down the transition between hot and cold. And second, airflow. If you have no airflow, you will have a problem somehow in the future. So airflow is the key factor. And that br brings us to the second thing, because we solve the uh, condensation problem inside of the walls but we didn't talk about the condensation inside of the house itself because just like a car we have a lot lots of windows and we still can have condensation on the windows well the difference between here and in a place that's really cold is that every single day even on the winter we open windows there is not even one day on the year that we don't open the windows so that means even though we might have some condensation on the windows we can always open and have airflow fix the problem so that's a smaller problem compared to places where it snows and where the winter is like i don't know minus five minus ten degrees and you cannot open the window here we can always open the window like today is really cold it's probably like the coldest day of the winter so far and everything is open if you go to anyone's house winter, the yeah. wind yeah <laughs> yeah but, i mean like all the windows are open and you have no condensation with open window it won't happen so i hope you guys understood if you want to see the result of all this fury, 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 if you want to see us actually building what we are talking about, come back next month, eh? next Monday, next month, <laughs> Monday, yeah. Well, for those of you who don't know yet, we have a new episode every Monday showing the progress of our tiny ship container house building. Yeah, yeah Not like today that we just like talk, talk and talk. Usually we are building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, usually we show some stories 
daily? Yeah, yeah, daily stories of, you know, just the day by day of the DIY building. Usually we are one week behind of the building in yeah. the episode. So the stories are just up to date exactly on the day. Yeah. And if you want some extra content sometimes, not always, but sometimes we have some extra content for our... Perks. Yeah, and some extra perks. For our patrons, for people who support our project, if you really like the content we produce and you want somehow to help, you can check it out our Patreon page. And apply us. Yeah, and I mean, that's it, I guess. Yeah. So, so see, see you guys next, next week. week.